Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning dear students, today's lecture is on Khilafat and non-cooperation movements. First of all, we will be looking to the background behind which Khilafat and non-cooperation movements were organized, background. background of Khilafat and non-cooperation movements. One, import of British goods increased. During the course of the first world war, it was from 1914 to 1918. It was because of the First World War, the import from Britain to India got reduced. But with the end of the First World War in 1918, again the import from Britain to India increased. It affected the development of modern industries in India. The Indian goods again could not compete with the imported British made goods. So, again the modern industries in India began to decline. Secondly, Rahula Act in my previous lecture you have come across with the fact that Raula Act was passed mainly for the suppression of the nationalist movement in India and this act was passed despite stiff resistance from Indians. It enraged the entire Indians through the passage of Raula Act the British government tried to make war time restrictions permanent. Any person could be arrested without any warrant. It was possible for the British police to detain a person without a trial for a maximum period of two years. It brought the opposition of Indian Indians against the British. Thirdly, Jalin Balabak massacre in the Jalin Balabak massacre, according to British official figures, three hundred and seventy nine persons were died. It also enraged the entire Indians. Fourth background. Government of India Act was passed in 1919. It was disappointing and unsatisfactory. In protest against Jalin Wala back, Devindranath Tagore denounced his knighthood. He renounced Devindranath Tagore renounced his knighthood in protest against Jalin Bala Back massacre. These were the background which provided Hilavat movement and non-cooperation movements. 
first of all kilafat issue what was kilafat issue in the first world war britain and turkey britain and turkey was on opposite sides in first world war britain and turkey was on opposite side in the first world war in this war britain defeated turkey britain emerged as victorious over turkey in the first world war in this war between britain and turkey turkey was defeated why did indians should start a movement against britain for waging war against turkey because indians considered the ruler of turkey khalifa as their religious leader the ruler of turkey khalifa was considered by indian muslims as their religious leader after the war britain adopted certain measures against turkey one khalifa lost control over moscus and khalifa lost territories in order to regain the lost prestige and glory of khalifa indian muslim started khilafat movement in order to regain the lost glory and prestige of khalifa indian muslim started khilafat movement on 22nd 23 november 1919 the khilafat conference was convened on 22nd 23 november 1919 khilafat conference was convened in india the leaders were hasrat mohani the leaders of the khilafat movement were hasrat mohani muhammad ali muhammad ali and shaukat ali muhammad ali shaukat ali and hasrat mohani were the leaders of the khilafat movement Muhammad Ali and Shaukat Ali popularly known as Ali Brothers in April 1920 Shaukat Ali stated that with the support of Hindus and Muslims a non cooperation movement would be started against the british administration in india in april 1920 shaukat ali one of the leaders of the khilafat movement stated that a non cooperation movement would be started against the british government under the able guidance of mahatma gandhi who command the respect of both the hindus and muslims but 
Mahatma Gandhi did not attack any effective measures which is start non-violent and non-cooperation movement during this time. But in May 1922 developments took place. Till May 1920, Mahatma Gandhi did not take any effective measure to start non-cooperation movement against the British government as stated by Shaukat Ali. But two developments took place in May 1920. What were these development? In May 1920, two developments were took place. One, publication of Hunter Committee report. Hunter Committee report on Punjab disturbances. Punjab disturbances. The Hunter Committee, which was appointed by the British government to find the person responsible for Jalin Wala back tragedy. The Hunter Committee was appointed by the British government to find the persons behind the Jalin Wala back tragedy. What was the finding of Hunter Committee report? Hunter Committee report found that General Dyer was not responsible. General Dyer not responsible for this tragedy. Actually, General Dyer ordered his troops to fire on the people assembled at Jalin Wala back Maidan. But the Hunter Committee report reported that General Dyer was not responsible for the tragedy at Jalin Wala back. What was the second development took place in May 1920? It was the Treaty of Severus. Treaty of Severus ended in the between Britain and Turkey. Treaty of Severus was ended in the between Britain and Turkey. As you have been told earlier, Britain and Turkey were ranged on opposite sides in the First World War. Under the terms of this treaty of Severus, Kali was lost. Kaliwa lost control over mosques. Control over mosques in Turkey. He lost his territories. He was also required to pay war indemnity. Under the terms of the Treaty of Severus, ended between Britain and Turkey, actually the treaty was imposed by the British government on Turkey. Under the imposed treaty by Britain on Turkey, Kaliba lost control over mosques, he lost his territories, he was also required to pay a war indemnity to the British government. The publication of the Hunter Committee report on Punjab disturbances, which inquired about Jalin Wala back tragedy, exonerated General Dyer. It irked entire Indians, particularly the people in Punjab and generally in India. The Treaty of Savras. irritated in their Indian Muslims. The publication of the Punjab committee, sorry, Kandar committee report on Punjab disturbances, Irkut, the 
the Indians in particular and people in Punjab, people in Punjab in particular and Indians in general. Likewise, the Treaty of Severus irritated entire Indian Muslims. Gandhi cited an opportunity to bring together Hindus and Muslims against the British by starting a non-cooperation movement. Gandhi cited a golden opportunity to bring Hindus and Muslims together against the British administration and he decided to start non-cooperation movement. non-cooperation movement. But before starting non-cooperation movement, Gandhi needed permission from Indian National Congress. The Nagpur session of the Indian National Congress the Nagpur session of the Indian National Congress held in December 1920 gave permission to Mahatma Gandhi to start non-violent non-cooperation movement. Permission was given to start non-violent non-cooperation movement. Non-violent non-cooperation movement. The Nagpur session of the International Congress convened in December 1920 gave Mahatma Gandhi permission to start non-violent non-cooperation movement. It had two aspects, non-cooperation movement had two aspects, one constructive, another one destructive. The non-cooperation movement had two aspects, constructive and destructive. What were the constructive aspects of the non-cooperation movement? Nationalization of education, nationalization of education to Promotion of indigenous goods, promotion of indigenous goods, popularization of charka and khadi, popularization of charka and khadi. popularization of charka and khadi enrollment of congress volunteers enrollment of congress volunteers these were the constructive aspects of the indian national congress nationalization of education promotion of indigenous goods popularization of charka and khadi enrollment of Congress volunteers, these were the constructive aspects of the non-cooperation movement. Now come to the destructive aspect, destructive aspect, boycott of, boycott of law courts, boycott of law courts. Boycott of educational institutions, boycott of educational institutions, boycott of election city legislature, boycott of elections to legislature. Boycott of official functions, official functions of government, boycott of official functions of government, boycott of, 
boycott of British goods, boycott of British goods, surrendering of titles, surrendering of titles and warnings given by the Britishers, given by the British. These were the destructive aspect of the non-cooperation movement. The destructive aspect of the non-cooperation movement included boycott of law courts, boycott of educational institutions, boycott of election city legislature, boycott of official functions of the government, boycott of British goods, surrender of titles and honours given by the British government. All these were included under destructive aspects of the non-cooperation movement. Now, the phases of the non-cooperation movement. Phases of non-cooperation movement. How many phases did non-cooperation movement have? It had four phases. four phases. Non-cooperation movement had four phases. We are now going to analyze each phase of the non-cooperation movement. The first phase of the non-cooperation movement was from January 1921 to March 1921. The first phase of the non-cooperation movement was from January 1921 to March 1921. What were the main activities during the first phase of the non-cooperation movement? Boycott of schools, colleges, law courts were the main activities during the first phase of the non-cooperation movement spanning between January 1921 and March 1921. C. R. Das, Chitaranjan Das and Motilal Nehru gave up their legal practice. This was the major activity during the first phase of the non-cooperation movement. The first phase of the non-cooperation movement was from January 1921 to March 1921, boycott of schools, colleges and law courts were the major activities during the first phase of the non-cooperation movement. Chitaranjan Das and Motilal Nehru gave up their legal practice. And now, second phase of the non-cooperation movement. Second phase of the non-cooperation movement was from April 1921 to June 1921, second phase, second phase, second phase of the non-cooperation movement was from April 1921 to June 1921. What were the major activities during the second phase of the non-cooperation movement? One, creation of Tilak Swaraj Fund. creation of Tilak Suraj Fund. Logamania Balagangadra Tilak died in 1920. In memory of Logamani Balagangadra Tilak, Tilak Suraj Fund to the tune of 1 crore rupees was it to be created. Second activity during this second phase was that enrollment of enrollment of one crore Congress volunteers enrollment of one crore Congress volunteers 
and installation of 20 lakh charkas these were the major activities during the second phase of the non cooperation movement spanning between april 1921 and june 1921 creation of tilak swaraj fund for 1 crore rupees enrollment of 1 crore congress volunteers to indian national congress installation of 20 lakh charkas these were the major activities during the second phase now third phase third phase of the non cooperation movement third phase of the non cooperation movement was from july 1921 to november 1921 The third phase of the non-cooperation movement was from July 1921 to November 1921. What were the major activities during the third phase of the non-cooperation movement? One, boycott of British goods. Boycott of British goods. Popularization of charka and khadi. popularization of charka and khadi jail baro by congress volunteers jail baro by congress volunteers and the boycott of the visit of prince of wales prince of wales these were the major activities during the third phase of the non cooperation movement spanning between july 1921 november 1921 boycott of british goods popularization of charka and khadi jail baro by congress volunteers boycott of the forthcoming visit of prince of wales these were the major activities during the third phase of the non cooperation movement now the fourth and last phase last and fourth phase of the non cooperation movement it was from november 1921 to 5 february 1922 the fourth and final phase of the non cooperation movement was from november 1921 to 5 february 1922 during the last phase of the non cooperation movement mahatma gandhi was about to start no revenue no rent campaign no revenue no rent campaign at bardoli mahatma gandhi decided to start no revenue no rent campaign at bardoli but about this time the peasants at chauri chaura in gorakhpur district of united provinces gorakhpur district of up attacked a police station and set it on fire 21 policemen died 
no revenue, no rent campaign at Bardoli. The peasants attacked a police station in Chauri Chaura in Gorakhpur district of United Provinces and set it on fire. 21 policemen were died in this incident. Shocked by this, Mahatma Gandhi suspended. Mahatma Gandhi suspended non-cooperation movement. Due to Chauri Chaura, Chauri Chaura incident on 5th February 1922. Shocked by Chauri Chaura incident, Mahatma Gandhi suspended non-cooperation. Now, we are going to look at the responses of the different strata of Indian society towards the non-cooperation movement. Responses. Responses to the non-cooperation movement. Calcutta, Bombay and Madras were the centers of elite politicians, but they did not have faith in Gandhian technique of non-violent, non-cooperation movement against the British. So, these elite politicians, elite politicians did not support, because they did not have faith in Gandhian technique of non-cooperation movement. Calcutta, Bombay and Madras were centers of elite politicians. The elite politicians did not have faith in Gandhian technique of non-cooperation movement, so they did not support. But comparatively newcomers in the Indian politics, for example, Rajendra Prasad, Rajendra Prasad from Bihar, Sardar Vallabhai Patel, Sardar Vallabhai Patel from Gujarat, they were comparatively newcomers to Indian politics. They had faith in Gandhian techniques of non-cooperation movement and they supported non-cooperation movement started by Mahatma Gandhi. Next, capitalist class. How did the Indian capitalist class responded to the non-cooperation movement, because capitalist class was one of the main beneficiaries, main beneficiaries, one of the main beneficiaries of non-cooperation movement. How? Because of the boycott of imported machine, imported machine made goods from Britain, it provided opportunity to Indian capitalist class to grow modern industries. On the part of the non-cooperation movement, imported British goods began to be boycotted and the people began to use indigenously manufactured products. The Indian capitalist class got benefits from this. Indians began to purchase indigenously manufactured products. Hence, the Indian capitalist class were one of the main beneficiaries of the non-cooperation movement. So, they had all the reasons to support non-cooperation movement started by Mahatma Gandhi. All the reasons they had, because they were one of the main beneficiaries of non-cooperation movement, 
they supported non cooperation movement. Third, women. What about women? Women offered their jewelry ornaments to Tilak Swaraj fund, which was created for 1 crore rupees, but which got oversubscribed because women contributed their ornaments to Tilak Swaraj fund, which got oversubscribed. Women gave up a parda and began to picket shop selling picket shop selling liquor and foreign goods. Women massively participated in the non cooperation movement, they gave up a parda offered their jewellery to Tilak Swaraj fund. They were mainly engaged in picketing of shop selling liquor and foreign cloth. What about the students? Since most of the leaders of the Indian National Congress at national, regional and provincial levels were arrested, the students community provided leadership in most of the places during the non cooperation days. In most of the places students provided leadership to the non cooperation movement. They left institutions of slavery run by the British aids and in order to cater the needs of these students, the non cooperated started institutions like Jamia Milia Islamia, Jamia Milia Islamia, Gujarat Vidya Beach, Gujarat Vidya Beach and Kashi Vidya Beach. These were the newly started educational institutions by non cooperators for the teaching of students who left institutions of slavery run by the British aids. Jamia Milia Islamia at Delhi, Gujarat Vidya Beach and Kashi Vidya Beach were the newly created educational institutions for studying the students who left institutions of slavery run by the British aids. Peasants, how did the peasants respond to the non cooperation movement? The peasants saw it an opportunity to fight against the cause of all their miseries. Semin thoughts. landlords. Mahatma Gandhi was started, Mahatma Gandhi started non cooperation movement on non violent lines. Again the Indian National Congress in its Nagpur session held in December 1920 told that it should be non violent mode on a non violent mode. But the peasants converted non cooperation movement to violent lines. Semindars and landlords began to be attacked. It finally resulted at Chauri Chaura incident. The peasants attacked Semindars and landlords. In retaliation, police intervention was sought. Police Lati charged the peasants. In retaliation, the peasants attacked the police station. In most of the places, the national leadership control over the non cooperation movement in rural areas. In these
places non cooperation movement assumed the character of violence so these were the responses of the different strata of indian society now british response how did the british response to the non cooperation movement <coughs> entire governmental machinery was used by the british government entire government machinery was used by the british government for the suppression of the non cooperation movement it collected secret reports secret reports from provinces about the non cooperation movement british government collected secret report from provinces three khilafat and the congress volunteers unlawful were declared unlawful the khilafat and the congress volunteers were declared as unlawful for public meetings public meetings and assemblies were banned by the british government assemblies were banned by the british government arrest and lathi charge became common arrest and lathi charge became common then the government tried to create a split between khilafat and congress in this ways the british government responded to the non cooperation movement the government mobilized entire governmental machinery including police and military for the suppression of the non cooperation movement the government select collected secret reports <laughs> about the progress of the non cooperation movement in provinces khilafat and congress volunteers were declared as unlawful public meetings and assemblies were banned by the british government arrest and lathi charges became common in addition to that the british government tried to create split between the khilafat and the congress causes of withdrawal what were the reasons behind the suspension of the non cooperation movement by mahatma gandhi when this question was asked to mahatma gandhi he responded that chauri chaura incident he stated that the indians had not learned the lessons of non violence that is why mahatma gandhi suspended the non cooperation movement non cooperation movement was suspended by mahatma gandhi because still indians had not learned the technique of non violence that is why mahatma gandhi suspended the non cooperation movement now the impact indians had not learned technique of non violence 
it was because of this Mahatma Gandhi stated that he suspended non cooperation movement. Impact Impact of the non cooperation movement. What were the impact of the non cooperation movement? One, removal of caste barriers or untouchability to some extent. Even in processions, meetings and even in jails, people belonging to different castes and communities worked it together. They used to eat food, slept it together and worked it together. People belonging to different castes and communities worked it together in the processions, meetings and even in jails. They ate it together, slept it together and worked it together. It resulted to reduce the caste barriers and untouchability to some extent, but it was not full remove untouchability, but to some extent it reduced the caste barriers or caste separateness. What was the second impact? Hindu Muslim unity. Hindu Muslim unity reached at its zenith. We can recollect the fact that it was because of the Treaty of Severus imposed by British government on the ruler of Turkey, Khalifa, and because of the publication of the Hunter Committee report, non cooperation movement was started by Mahatma Gandhi to undone Punjab wrong and Kilawat issue. Mahatma Gandhi started non cooperation movement to find the persons responsible for the tragedy and to award punishment to them and for the regaining of the lost glory and prestige of Khalifa, non-violent, non-cooperation movement was started by Mahatma Gandhi. So, no doubt it brought Hindu-Muslim unity at its height. Hindu-Muslim unity reached at its zenith during the non cooperation movement and it was difficult to differentiate between non cooperation movement and the Kilawatha movement. Both the Hindus and Muslims worked it together. This kind of unity among the Hindus and Muslims was not real achieved in the later years. Imported declined. Because of the boycott of Manchester made British goods, the import during the non cooperation days declined. For example, in 1905-1908, during the Sodeshi movement, during the period of Sodeshi movement, the import was 1,292 million yards of British
cotton priced goods. During the period of Sodeshi movement spanning between 1905 to 1908, only 1292 million yards of British cotton priced goods were imported. But in 1921 22, it was 955 million yards. The import of British goods got reduced, leading to the development of modern industries in India. You have seen that Charka and Khadi got popularization during the non cooperation days. A modern industries began to grow as a result of the boycott of British goods. For nationalist movement, reached the com remotest corners of the country, remotest corners. The nationalist movement spread different parts of the country during the efforts taken by non cooperation movement. Five. popular economic revival, economic revival, non cooperation movement resulted economic revival due to popularization of Kadi, popularization of Kadi, Charka, and village construction, the non cooperation movement resulted economic revival in the country because of popularization of Charka, popularization of Khadi and village reconstruction. These were the major impacts of the non cooperation movement. Now, coming to questions. First question, why did Gandhi suspend non cooperation movement? Why did Mahatma Gandhi suspend non cooperation movement? What were the responses to non cooperation movement? Question number 3. Who were the leaders of Khilafat movement? Who were the leaders of Khilafat movement? Question number 4. What was Hunter Committee? These are the questions to which you are expected to answer. Thank you for watching my class.